Ramble. Thank you to Chime and BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode of the podcast. Hey, everybody, I'm back again to tell you about some Lou Berger shows. If you're in Fort Wayne, Indiana on October 6th or DeKalb, Illinois on October 7th, we got shows. Also, we're doing a show in Brooklyn on October 14th. Hope to see you there. And we have a tour forming in November for some other places. So stay tuned. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Tripod. Ooh, welcome to the Tripod Start Your Engines. We Here hope we go. you're having a wonderful Thursday or maybe... Friday. I don't know when you listen. Yeah. Or maybe a wonderful road trip. Could be a road trip. Hey, maybe you're finally catching up on pods. This is your fourth or fifth in a row, and you've been laughing and looking for a good one. Well, here's one. Now, we a uh, little behind-the-scenes action here. We sometimes film pods back-to-back. Back-to-back. Spoiler alert. So, Rainey, you are following up on last week. You are how many quarters of the way through your Red Bull? Well, I'm about um, two-thirds of the way through, and I am feeling it. <laughs> oh, can I try a sip of the orange? You want to try it? I want to try yeah. the orange. I've never had the orange. We have I don't orange think I when you say feeling it, what exactly is it? Zach, I feel crazy. <laughs> I feel so lightheaded. <laughs> I feel like I really need wow. to va va vroom. Did you take some food? Did you eat some food? I had a little cheese. Okay, you should have a piece of some food. Rainy, yeah, let's get you some real food. Let's get Rainy some protein bar. Yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna from, get from you from a corner of Miles's desk. <laughs> no, I no, I opened this this morning. Uh-huh. Where is this from? This is a yeah. protein bar from ten weeks ago. Yeah, let's okay. get you. Let's get you swole. While you're eating that protein, let me talk to you about how I just picked up this orange can uh-huh. of Red Bull. What flavor do you think it is? O- orange. Orange. Clementine. Tangerine. Citrus. Grape. Pile. Mango. Mango. Strawberry. Apricot. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. Gun- and now the smell. <laughs> I bet that smells like death. It is crazy. I'm going to take a sip and let you ha- take a yeah, sniff. Yeah, like a sip. It probably smells like a vape flavor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Welcome wow. to our new segment. Whoa! Try Holy Red shit, Bull. that smells like give ass. It, give it. Give it. Just, it smells like a hookah. It smells like hookah it. flavor. Yeah. <laughs> it smell. It tastes great. It tastes like candy. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, this is so artificial smelling. Whoa. Oh, I need to try a sip. That tastes like Rainy's sobering up with her breath. It tastes like a, a crazy gummy bear. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. It's fucking crazy. It's thick and it's sour and it lingers on the tongue. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it and funnily, it doesn't taste like Red Bull at all, but then when you're done with it, you're like, oh yeah, that was Red Bull. That's gamer fuel. The right? caffeine <laughs> the caffeine with that they had. I oh. kind of like it. But only because I love Red Bull and I can tell that it's a sister. It tastes like <laughs> of the bull that I know. So well. It's a sister. It's a sister. It's a sister. Sister I, flavor. It tastes like you were biting on a like a strawberry toy mm-hmm. and it broke and like and the syrup goop leaked and the into flavoring your mouth. of the toy made it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, uh, yucky. One time yeah. I was biting a glow stick, like you know, I was just kind of chewing on it, yeah, and it broke that. open in my mouth, and I I went. <laughs> And I and I ran to my dad's room. And I'm like, ah! and I didn't know what to do. And he grabbed me by the wrist. We ran into the bathroom. He shut off the lights, and I, my tongue stuck out. And you could see the glow in the dark goo on my tongue. <laughs> wow! And we just, ran to the bathroom, not to rinse your mouth, but to say, "Let's look at it." And then we went. That's so funny. And then we scraped it off. It tasted so bad. I mean, poison. 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 Okay. Okay, yeah, it's you know what? It's I don't tell you how to live your life. You should have been taken away from your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do tell you how to live your life when it comes to not ingesting poison. Actually, yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. Yeah. Is what I've heard. Probably. Unless yeah. it's alcohol, in which case the country's pretty chill with it. We're cool with that type of poison, am I yeah. right? Ooh, most yeah, popular yeah. poison. Most popular poison. <laughs> we did it. Top three poisons. <laughs> One. Boozing. Two. Schmoozing. Schmoozing. Three. Glue. Bruising. Uh, Bruising. <laughs> well, you guessed it, audience. We're talking about jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a little... Because we're talking not jealousy in the thou shalt not fashion. We're talking about jealousy in the like, wow. Good for you. Thou shalt. <laughs> Ooh, ah! Ooh, <laughs> boom, 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 bah. Wow, I love that sound. That's a new one. That's when everyone, Give it hit whenever me someone again. drops a bombshell. That that's was the like sound that, goes. that was the the moment of the like the Red Bull in my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like do it while I'm taking. Is it possible that Keith has never been on the episode when we had that sound? 
It's like a Tony Hawk's underground it's sound fucking effect. Dope. And by the way, we we bought this super cool soundboard, and we've yet to load anything else. Well, we do. The problem is, I had some stuff loaded on it, oh. and they were funny sound bites from Me across all the shows. Yeah. But then the problem is that every time you format the SD card, it erases the sounds oh. off. So you have to reload them from the computer. So it's just a little bit of a hassle. It's tedious. Too and much work. Is, I get it. Is, well, it's like so a podcast job. producer should probably be doing that job. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there Too not like work, a, a preload set that we can have? Because I don't want sounds of us. I want like a wooga. Yeah. I have it. That's nice. Ugh. That's haunting. It was like ghosts or ghosts. Really, I didn't out. like that. It's like the the photo at the end of The Shining, if you could hear them. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Rainy? Oh, oh, sorry, Rainy. Um, sorry, Rainy. Let's see. What was I saying? Are you drinking Red Bull out of the mug now? No, now I'm drinking coffee. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to sort of to normalize because every morning I have coffee and I didn't have coffee this That's morning. That's not going to so do sort it. Of like, I, I've get back never to seen Rainy tweak this much. This is a mistake. <laughs> and the bird says. <laughs> 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 what? Hey, you remember Rainy's bird impression? It was a fa fan favorite. I don't know this. He went, hello, Steve. It was like a whole thing. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. How's the weather today? And then all the other birds are like, oh my gosh, Steve is talking again about the weather. And then... You don't remember this? Zach's upset. <laughs> I'm not upset. I'm, I'm thrilled. He's um, happy. But uh, yeah, Keith, we had a whole thing where Rainy did impressions of birds. I'm sorry. I missed miss it, it or forgot it. You may have forgotten. I don't know. I've been... I had to miss some. I was touring. I was... And you don't listen while you're... Do I, I don't listen to the <laughs> tripod? I actually do listen to the tripod, but I typically will listen to it on a drive that is less than like 30 minutes long and then I probably won't finish the episode. But Keith, I do listen to Keith the first does half this thing of where he episodes. listens yeah. and when it's not him talking, he mutes it. I skip it. That's good. <laughs> you, all Keith Fast cut. I, we export an all Keith cut. <laughs> Ooh, that's a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> do you guys remember like sometimes... The try Keith. Sometimes we do incredible things and then it, like time passes and we're like, it, like, oh, we have to get to the next thing. But we don't rest on our laurels enough. Yeah. And one of the things I thought that we did was really cool was when we released the all synth cut to Patreon. <laughs> yeah. I was so proud of that trailer. I was so proud of that day where <laughs> the fans like didn't yeah, like the, the comments. They like didn't like the synthesizer and then they like really wished it was there to the next time because we had a producer's note that was like we had to cut some of the synthesizer because we got so many comments. And then we had, like released the cut that was like with 10 times more <laughs> synthesizer. <laughs> I here's here's my new rule. <laughs> if we don't anger at least half the audience with an episode, yeah, yeah. we're doing our job wrong. Controversy yeah. sells. We yeah. need to look. We need to alienate yeah. as a way to double down mm -hmm. on those who get it. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Polarizing is good. Polarizing is good. That's how they make batteries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm picking something that maybe people won't like. He, nobody's gonna not like that. Oh, <laughs> this a is goose. A being right, horny or something. So for those who are watching, um, <laughs> there is a goose who has entered the studio. A goose has entered the chat. <laughs> the goose has the entered goose the chat. Has entered the villa. And <laughs> is sitting on the couch, just sharing the microphone with Keith and appears to be very horny goose. Yeah. <laughs> the goose is drinking the Red Bull. <laughs> I can make a lot of dumb sounds. Yeah. How's this one for a dumb sound? That was really good. I don't know. You're using your vocal cords you to know, make sometimes it. Sometimes it's good to, your, your brain creates more memories when you do things that aren't part of your routine. So it's good to do things that like, it's sort of like the Natalie Portman thing in Garden State where she's like, yeah, bum, bum, dum, bum. Oh. and she's like, that's never been done before. I haven't the first one who's ever done that. The first one who's ever done that. And it's like, yeah, yeah Natalie Portman, you do rule. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> does rule. I like Natalie Portman. And even though the culture has turned on Zach Braff, that movie is fun. Yeah, you know I what? Well, let's revisit it on an episode of Tripod. It's not going to hold up. Guilty, guilty, guilty oh, times. Definitely not going to hold up. But you don't think so? Because so many... Like, I mean, I, I also don't think it will. The but. learnings from that movie were applied better in recent things, I think. Like probably. The, like the feeling of like, oh, like this movie's about loneliness and like this whole... And it's like... It probably no one not gets me. Yeah, like that's been done in a less whiny way by not Zach Braff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> like people like that stuff. Scrubs. Is a good show. I, it is. I it really is a good enjoyed show. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to watch that always in college. We don't talk about it enough. We don't talk about Scrubs. Scrubs. Elliot, JD. Wow. Just name all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> name the characters I remember that I like. The janitor. The janitor. The janitor. Um, what's his name? Mike. 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 Something. 
No, his, I think Mike name. is the guy's name in. Oh, I know. The, the actor's name is Mike something. Oh, Mike interesting. Something. Um, I have an anthropological thing. Uh huh. Yeah. What? 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 And it's because you were asking um, about people you're jealous of. So yeah. I was thinking about it. Yeah. And you know what I think? I have to be honest with myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're in your 20s, you can be in ridiculous relationships or you can be in single. And sometimes you get lucky. Mm. And I've done the single <laughs> route. <laughs> okay. and, and also sometimes you get lucky. True. So some of my friends who like have these relationships and you're like, come on guys, like this is just bad. I think some of the judgment that I have is because I'm kind of jealous of it. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that's a normal thing is to be like annoyed by someone else's relationship. But it's you really want to have a shitty relationship. Like not like, not like really, really shitty, but just in the way where it's like, you guys are ridiculous. Like come like, you, because you they're know. so in love. No, because they're like fighting every day. They have stupid drama. Oh, it's a bad relationship. Right. It's a, it's like a bad relationship. Not like anything toxic or like scary bad, but it's just like, yeah, this is like, doesn't look great. But then sometimes I'm like, yeah, but at least they're like, but also like. What I'm hearing is that your things. analytical mind is preventing yeah. you from engaging in a relationship that you know is not destined to work, but yeah. you crave and perhaps are a little jealous of those who can throw caution to the wind and enjoy, into, yeah. enjoy something that clearly is not meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. And that can only really happen in your early 20s. Because that can be fun. Like, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I dated, uh, you know, this girl in New York and it was like a train wreck, but it was really <laughs> kind of fun for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that's part of the thing. When that's you're part of learning around. who you should be with. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, you know? whoa, like, the, I really did not need to put the effort in there. What was the train wreck about it? Like, how, what kind of conflict did you run into? <laughs> um, she loved crashing trains. It was a really <laughs> hazardous. She had a lot of stuff that she was working on, and I was working through a lot of stuff too. But I think it's one of those things where when you're sad, you put effort into things that are not your own stuff to be mm. like, I got to save this other thing. Mm. It's yeah. sort of like the like, mm. I got to make this art the best art ever. And it's like the real art was working on my own anxieties. Whoa. That's interesting. Woo! What do you think, Goose? <laughs> Wow. Well, what's let's yeah. Well, yeah, never mind. This is too heavy. No, when, when he was going heavy for heavy with it, I was going heavy with it. Get jiggy with it. Getting heavy with it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> other than being jealous of people who can have you know <clears throat> relationships that aren't destined for success because yeah. they want to get laid. Um, <laughs> um, what are you jealous of? Who so, who are you jealous so of? So we're talking about people that we are jealous of and there are aspects of these people's lives, careers, things that we really admire. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about jealousy. Things that we love that we perhaps want to see in ourselves or we want to see in our futures that we wish we had more of. Perhaps things that reflect uh, an aspect of ourselves that we're lacking mm -hmm. that or something that we do too much. Mm -hmm. So Keith, I see you chomping on the bit. Who is the first person that you are jealous of? Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, yes, a yeah. great answer. A great answer because a, a guy who is very, very talented, yeah. very hardworking, but started as a kid star and he just was the right person and look for the part of mm -hmm. Harry Potter, one of the biggest fantasy franchises ever. And he was able to do all of the films always, I think like, except for maybe the first two movies, his performance is incredible and his performance is great for a child in yep. the first two movies. But then he does all those things. And then what does he do after that? He's like, I'm going to go do serious work on Broadway. Awesome. He was in Equus. Yeah. Like I'm going to hang dong on yeah, Broadway. I'm going to be yeah. naked on stage and in very vulnerable, do something, a real actor. And just, I think it was probably himself being like, what did I luck into this life? I right. need to figure out if I am good at this for real. And then since then only does the funniest, yeah. weirdest, not career expanding projects, no. but rather cool Art. Danny Rad said, I'm going to be a little weirdo for the rest of my life. And, yeah. He's I, in Miracle uh, Workers. He is mm -hmm. in Swiss Army Man playing a farting dead corpse. Oh, he's he's weird Al. He's, a, he's yeah. weird Al in the biopic. He's in Guns Akimbo with mm -hmm. bear slippers and guns screwed to his hands. Yeah. He is making exclusively the weirdest stuff because... He's got that bag. And, and people also like he's known to be a pleasure to work with too. A really? delightful yes. man. Which is he's really surprising. Really nice. Yeah. I the I mean, he's short. Short King. Which <laughs> to the short people out there, an inspiration. Inspira short King we stand. <laughs> I'm not jealous of that attribute in particular. Keith admits. <laughs> I don't want to be short. Keith admits to being I jealous. I wouldn't know how to be short. What no, do we, we think? 
short is? What do you think his height is? I think he's five seven. Five, I think he's less than five nine. Yeah, I think so. Too. So less than five nine is short. Fuck off. No, I just think that's what he is. He's probably five seven. Five five. Five five. 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 That's <laughs> <laughs> that's bitty to me that's a tiny guy that's about the size of the lego man right a foot shorter than me and keith i'm guessing yeah he's that yeah. small but he no, i'm not I'm, i i, I'm I not love this five. oh i'm six five i know but i'm not oh i thought you were as tall as me i wish <laughs> <laughs> that i'm jealous of mine yeah I number two got, person i think it's because i bad posture and so like you could be even taller yeah <laughs> no, <I'm> not. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't hunched over all I the time know. you're probably six eight up there You know, summer, it's over, and it's sad. We hate to see it go, but one way to ease the pain, well, how about a checking account with no monthly fees? Like a cool breeze, Chime is a refreshing way to handle your money with no monthly fees, no maintenance fees, or minimum balance fees. It's how banking should be. And when you need to access your money, you can do so fee-free at more than 60,000 in-network ATMs at many locations like most Walgreens, 7-Elevens, and CVS. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime, fee-free for you and no cash out fees for them chime no monthly fees no vibe killing fees sign up for a chime checking account only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score get started at chime.com slash try guys that's chime.com slash try guys chime is a financial technology company not a bank banking services provided by and debit card issued by the bank corp bank or stride bank na members fdic out of network atm withdrawal fees apply except at money pass atm in a 7-eleven location and at all all point or visa plus alliance atm other fees such as third party and cash deposit fees may apply And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I think all of us, everybody's dealing with problems, going through tough times in their life, and encountering problems is good, right? When you encounter a problem and you get through it, it helps you become a better person. It strengthens your development as a human. And therapy can help you do it. I'm talking today about BetterHelp. It's heavily used here at Try Guys. We know a lot of our fans also use it as well. It's hard to know who to talk to sometimes about a problem, right? And it's nice to have a neutral soundboard to help you work through something. It's very helpful, you know, for me, it helps me maybe be less stressed over something that's on my mind. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime, which I know that's a really difficult thing in the other world of therapy. Getting new therapists is like super hard. BetterHelp is great because you can call, you can chat online, you can do face-to-face, you can just text. So when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash tripod today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P, help.com slash tripod. It's a great choice of person to be jealous of because I think that that is what every creative person should aspire to be, to find a level of success. And instead of trying to chase that high unsuccessfully for the rest of your life, you say, I have achieved and now I am going to retreat into work. I'm re- going to retreat into fun and mm-hmm. do stuff that is satisfying, that fulfills my heart and soul. Instead of, I mean, the worst version of Daniel Radcliffe would have been if he was like, I'm Harry Potter. I'm a bad boy. People fucking love uh-huh. me. And he's like going yeah. out clubbing, like bottle service. Right. If he was Bieber. Bieber or like trying, like had a <laughs> right? huge like, posse. That's, yeah. that's the, uh, either you're Harry Potter or your Bieber. Oh my God. Can you imagine yeah, really if Daniel funny. Radcliffe had gotten like super buff and was like, I'm going to fight Jake Paul. And oh then like, my oh God. God. He's so embarrassing. And like had just been like, I'm just always trying to be the number one right. star in the world forever and ever and ever. And he's like, no, I don't care about that. No. He must have great parents. He must I have bet. a great circle. They didn't want him to do the movie. And they they were probably, is which right? is why I think that he is like that is a I think a sign of great parents. Like he was offered the movie, mm-hmm. and I think they even said no at first, and then they they kept hounding. And why why the audition? <laughs> well, no, because his I think his parents realized what it would be, uh, and that it would be like he, uh, would, he wouldn't get a childhood essentially. Sure, parents and were probably then he, like, of course you can audition. He's never gonna. Get yeah, exactly. And then yeah. and then I believe oh, the story fuck, is they that, like no, he can't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is crazy. I mean, he's. The I mean, best. it's right. I think. Given the case studies that we have, <laughs> most child stars, it's not a good thing. Like yeah. I'd say, it's like yeah. it's like we're, your odds are worse than a coin flip for sure of oh, it being bad yeah. eventually. And so he's an exception, and he's quite the. I mean, honestly, all the Harry yeah, Potter yeah, the Harry kids Potter kids are, are and safe. maybe maybe those sets were just way better than 
all the other sets where you know kids have been exploited. Emma Watson yeah. speaking of the United Nations. She's awesome. She's, She's cool also which should be my her. number two of yeah. just like inspirational. Yeah. So cool. Number three, Rupert Grint. Rupert Grint. <laughs> I was going well, to say Rupert. A star. Yeah. He opened a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's up to. He's acting. Oh, he you know what he's in? Servant on Apple TV. The oh, really yeah. weird show. With, weird um, show. It's, it's kind of fun, though. I yeah. Think, I kind of liked it. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking, <laughs> I imagine, a lot about people in creative fields because that's who we are yeah. and what our souls mm-hmm. yeah. go. So for my first person that I'm jealous of, I've talked about this before and I'm going to talk about it again. I am super jealous of Donald Glover, Mr. Childish Gambino. Oh, well, yeah. I think that he is oh, my God, he's possibly the most talented man in Hollywood. Yeah. And but TV that's, star, rock star. TV star, rock star, oh. movie star. But what I'm so inspired and impressed by is his ability to one, do it all mm-hmm. in to the top of mm-hmm. anyone's ability, but also his ability to move on from things. Yeah. Yes. And so let's track his career. Donald Glover began on YouTube as a sketch comedian. Yeah. He was in Derek oh. Comedy mm-hmm. making goofy web sketches. Arguably like one of the first sketch com- comedy groups to really pull off YouTube in a successful mm-hmm. way. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, they kept they kept at it, the three of them. They, they made a movie together. But he said, I don't want this life. I want, I'm a serious uh, creator, creative. I'm going to go write. And so he retreated behind the scenes, was on the writing staff of 30 Rock, mm-hmm. won an Emmy. He is... You know, Wait, I didn't know any of this. this yeah, is right. Crazy. This, Donald Glover. Keep listening. Girl. <laughs> keep listening. Donald Glover is, is so wildly talented. So, and then while he's doing 30 Rock, he's like, this whole time, by the way, he's like, oh, also on his website, he's like, also, I'm Childish Gambino. I'm a rapper. And people yeah. are like, okay, but you're like the funny guy. So, like, no. Right. And his first albums came out, and it was kind of like, it was hard to wrap your mind around. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were, the albums were a little, like, he hadn't really fully found his voice yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were kind of like uh, comedy adjacent. Like it was nerd were, rap. A some little. of them were funny. Yeah. Some of them were like a little jokey or heady. But they weren't community. But then right. you hear some songs and you're like, fucking like heartbeat. You're like, yo, this oh, guy camp. Goes that whole fucking- album, his whole album is like, it, that is serious stuff. It's great. Yeah. And then, yeah, then he gets cast on community and he is goofy, very funny uh, uh, comedy sidekick, still doing rap. Pivots fully into rap after community and says, I'm done with this acting thing releases. I mean, I'm skipping around chronology here, but, uh, uh, awaken my love releases Redbone and has like a modern funk classic. What the fuck? Yeah. So not only now has he gone from comedy rap to rap to funk an album so good that like funkadelic called one of their buddies at four in the morning and was like, you got to wake the fuck up and listen to this. <laughs> so cool. Uh, like truly one of the greatest albums. And then he's like, oh, by the way, now I'm going to go to FX and make Atlanta, which is a dark comedy mm-hmm. that is a uh, a beautiful show about the absurdity of the black experience in America. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make something that is still funny, but is weird and interesting mm-hmm. and, and layered. And then he continued to evolve that show where season three was basically half Black Mirror, a, a joke that it's like black, black mirror. It was a black mirror just about being black in America. Yeah. And like didn't even have the main cast in episodes. Mm-hmm. Then, by the way, he's still a fucking movie star. He's he's Lando Calrissian. Like, oh, mm-hmm. right. I forgot about yeah. that. And along the way, he's continuing to say projects need to die. And yeah. so I am not jealous in the, in the sense of like, I wish I could do all those things. I'm not a, a rapper. I do definitely wish that I could have been like, jump from like, you know, being on a writing staff or something like 30 Rock would be so cool. Mm-hmm. But with Childish Gambino, he has said, and we'll see if this holds, that he's retired that project. He said it's done. He's, he's not going to make music as Childish Gambino. He's done. Anymore. Well, and it's, it's someone else. And, and yeah, right, maybe. Atlanta won, you know, won an Emmy for, for mm-hmm. best show, best comedy in its first season. He waited many years to make season two, then filmed season three back to back Mm -hmm. or season three and four back to back and said, it's done. He's just, that's it. Cause projects need to end. And Mm -hmm. it's something that we talk about Mm -hmm. and are terrified of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to end something at its Zenith Mm -hmm. while it still has juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I admire and I I aspire to do. And it's, um, it's scary because if you have something that works, how can you throw it away? How can you Uh take that and say, well, it's time for the next thing. But as a creative person, in order to grow and to keep growing with your audience, you have to do it. You have to have that courage. So I hope it's something that we can emulate within the work that we do here in the Try Guys. But until then, I will say, Donald Glover, 
I'm jealous of you. Totally. And and that actually reminds me of, I'm not necessarily jealous of these creators, but I'm jealous of this project that they did. Um, uh, Unis Honest was his project. Oh, yeah. Oh, a couple yeah, years, cool project. A couple years ago. It's Markiplier and I forget the other guy's name. Ethan. Ethan. Crank Plays. Crank Plays. Crank mm. Plays. And um, they did a project where they're like, for a single year, we're starting a new YouTube channel and we are uh, making a video a day, mm -hmm. a video a day, every single day for an entire year. And at the end of the year mark, we are deleting everything. We are issuing copyright strikes on people who repost it. It is done. It is off the internet. Yeah. And that project. is such a cool idea. And like the pinnacle of like so much of what's wrong with content is this idea that it's just like, Oh, we're making stuff and like, you know, like you can just see it later or like so many art experiences. Like you have to believe like this person came on stage this one night and they did a surprise show and it's like, well, you can watch it on YouTube. And it was something that truly was just for those yeah. people, just for that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that rules. I think that's yeah. Like, really Similarly, when people are filming concerts, it's like a crowd of phones, you know? Yeah, right. And I'm like, I don't know, just put it, in, don't do that. It's yeah. never, I think you, sh you could do three stories at a concert. Oh, sure. You're not going to watch back yeah, that whole song. I mean, maybe no. you are if you're in high school, but everyone after that, like, you're not gonna. The sit. sound's gonna be bad. It's gonna yeah. sound bad. It's not gonna look as good. Just grab the stories to prove you were there, yeah. and then enjoy yeah. the show. Right? Yeah. You know what I find interesting is that my memory has been shaped by technology. And what I mean by that is that units of memory mm -hmm. fit into 15 seconds for me <laughs> because that's how long an Instagram story mm -hmm. is. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I'm filming, I'm really just looking for that 15 second snippet where I go, cool, that's a good unit of memory mm -hmm. done. Yeah. And it's, I don't, oh, I normally don't post them because people mm -hmm. don't want to see my fucking right. concert footage, but that's about the amount of time that my memory can handle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's a chicken or egg thing that, you know, that is how much a memory can handle and that's why the stories are that long or the stories are that long and therefore my memory is now yeah. shaped by it. Hard to say. Yeah. And there's also like, apparently there is a phenomenon that people's memories have gotten worse as technology has gotten better because you are able to store important information uh -huh. on yeah. computers. I'm sure I believe yeah. that. Wow. I mean, like we phone. all used to, I would be able, to, I'm, as a kid, I could remember like 20 different phone numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Why, why you bother? Anymore? Yeah, why? Maggie made me memorize her phone number and I'm like, this is stupid. And she's like, what if you're somewhere without your phone? I'm like, that would never happen. It, it, I, I know <laughs> Becky's number. Yeah, and I know. Oh, I did it. And it's yeah. happened to me several times where I'm like, fuck, my phone is dead. I need to call Sarah. Can yeah, I charge that phone, phone bro. Call the, yeah. Well, yeah. Rainy, I'm curious. Uh, jealousy number one. Jealousy number one, uh, Reese Witherspoon. Ooh, let's talk about it. Speak on that. I just think that she... You're big, getting big into crypto? <laughs> is she into crypto fuck? Oh, no. Is really? she one of them? <laughs> yeah, she loves NFTs. I'm sure she just like doesn't fucking... Some assistant pitched it to her, and she doesn't know. I'm that's sorry. So I didn't mean to undermine your hero. Damn. No, that's a bummer, but yeah, yeah we stand. <laughs> well, the reason I... Yeah. <laughs> um, Huge pro NFT podcast right here. No. We had a great bit on You Can Sit With Us about Emily Mariko releasing NFTs. No! But, no, it's not true. Oh, God. <laughs> that was like would doing be a bit. really funny. It was very funny. Is Salmon having like a fucking moment? Salmon's hot. Salmon is hot. I want it. Let's, let's come back to Reese, it. Reese Witherspoon. Well, here's actually a question. Do you guys think... Oh, because I was just about to say, like, I think I cherish intelligence, but I'm like, actually, people who are smart, a lot of times it seems pretty miserable. You guys notice that? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Interesting. It's, it's yeah. true. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Like, I think it's true that, I don't know, dumb people are happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at first, you know, pass at the prompt. Um, I was thinking about smart people because I was like, oh, it'd be so great to be smart and just sort of like be able to create all this stuff that speaks to people. But then I'm like, maybe it's not. But Reese Witherspoon, I think, is like super talented. And I really love how she is like, strong holding stories about women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like her. She's cool. Yeah. Her well, company, Hello Sunshine, is also cool. Yeah. I think that's a cool idea. She I, I, I assume Tennessee. that's what you were going to talk about. I mean, she took, she went from a Academy Award winning acting career mm -hmm. to being a huge entrepreneur. Hello yeah. Sunshine is a multimedia conglomerate. They have mm -hmm. a book club and I'm sure a wine club and, and yeah. uh, it's just 360. They create online content, uh, uh, video content. Uh, they're on every platform. It's a really smart move uh, that yeah. she's been able to kind of spread into new domains. Which I didn't know this. I saw a TikTok about this like literally yesterday. But it was about how <laughs> I saw a TikTok about this. the whole smartness of Hello Sunshine is that they have a book club. Yeah. And so they will put, uh, they will um, find books that are like lesser known by like, 
3 million copies of them for their book club wow. and in exchange for licensing the movie rights <gasps> to those books. So like they're like, hey, we can sell 3, 000, 3 million of these yeah. in order to license the movie rights and then we'll make this like into a feature, which is like brilliant. Yeah. And also like cool for if you're an author that has like a kind of indie small book, you're not only like probably getting a movie deal, but you're also getting 3 million. You know, yeah. it's just kind of a cool. So then Hello Sunshine like makes uh, movies out of those books. Reese That's really loves cool. that money. She loves that cash. She loves baby. that cash money. Also, her whoever her TikTok person is, she's great. They are great. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to think for jealousy. Like you're trying to. Th this was your prompt. This was your yeah. idea. Yeah. And I. Yeah. I think that sometimes I get into a rabbit hole where I'm being jealous of people that I actually like. I'm looking at their life and their stuff, and I'm just like, I don't know that. I really need to be jealous of that person. Well, while I, 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 to buy you some time. Yeah. Do you want it? Hang do you on. want time? Give me 10 seconds. Full <laughs> silence. <laughs> I, I'd say a big advance in my life yeah. is the ability to be positively jealous yeah, instead of negatively jealous. And sure. it's something that's only happened in the last few years. I credit it to a new herb I'm taking called Relora. Can't recommend it enough. Oh love my, my little God. love my little herbs. Zach selling herbs on the podcast. Love my little what herbs. Herb is this? It's like a it's a concoction of Chinese herbs and and paint thinner and and <laughs> I'm not kidding, guys. I took this. It's just a supplement. Like it's huh. just fucking herbs. And I took it and I like fully noticed a change in my attitude. <laughs> but like you know, fucking mushrooms can change your mind. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. And I I've, I keep getting advertised on TikTok this like mush like i don't know it's some drink made of a bunch of mushrooms and huh. some other bullshit lion's mane probably i don't know yeah, yeah and it's like apparently they're like you should drink this instead of coffee uh, i don't no. know like, back well, off back Why off. can't i have both yeah. yeah stop trying to replace my likes with your likes and let's all just like it all okay Woo! okay yeah but you should probably try Here some mushroom i do juice. want to try the mushroom juice uh <laughs> but this i don't know i just started taking it and like literally within three days i was like I don't resent anyone's success. I, I wish you all well, wow. and your success has nothing to do with me, and uh -huh. I love you all for it, and we're all on our own journeys. It just, like, fucking, like, wow, changed. Dang. I mean, it was the right, obviously, like, my therapy progressed to the right point, but, like, then yeah. also I took this thing, and I was like... <laughs> I'll have what he's having. I'm <laughs> like, it, it's a game changer. I don't know why, and I don't care if it's placebo. It works. Yeah. I love a good placebo. Fucking... Yeah. Trick my brain into happiness, please. Oh, please. Please. <laughs> please. You know, in seventh grade, my science fair project was the placebo effect. And me and my friend Zoe, shout out, we cre we had all our class run a mile and then um, in gym class. And then we made them drink this thing that we made that was just like this thickener that her grandma takes to like swallow and like raspberry extract. And then we had them run again and they ran like 30 seconds faster, but that's awesome. It was because the first time it was all ice. It was in the winter <laughs> and the second time. It was so we got an F. <laughs> so we got an F. Yeah, we failed. So it wasn't actually yeah. the police of people of effect. Person that I'm jealous of. Yeah. Similar vein of Childish Gambino in abandoning projects, all that stuff. Mm, Dr. Vivian Bo Burnham. Yeah, I love Bo Burnham. Bo 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 Vivian. He's on. Hmm? Dr. Vivian Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham. No, it's Bo Burnham. Yeah, why did you, why'd you say Dr. Vivian? Dr. I just thought it'd be funny. Okay. It was, yeah, it was, it was confusing. <laughs> it was that, no, I thought maybe that was an inside joke. It kind of made us all feel out. No, Bo, Bo is on my list as well. Bo Burnham is Bo up Burnham there. Rocks. And I love, uh, I mean, I also like, it's kind of fucking cool that he uh, has been on the internet for a long time, has shit that like does not hold up. And he's like, that's part of it. That, it's the internet. I don't like, he's like, I was yes. like 17 when I started. I have a lot of shit that's not good anymore. I'm not going to take it down because I think that's like hiding the growth of me as a creator or whatever. Yeah. Um, People forget that he was a YouTuber. I yeah, think. Yeah. No, for sure. And also just like his specials have meant so much to me in different ways as he's gone mm -hmm. on. And um, specifically his like, you know, inside, I just think is a really cool art project. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, this like, and also somebody who like, um, uh, that funny feeling is like a good song. And like, yeah. I think it's like genuinely good in a serious piece of music. Yeah, we get down to the Phoebe Bridgers cover. Yeah, oh, yeah. That. That cool. I, so here's the thing. Yeah, please. I hate him. No, I love his work. <laughs> yeah. I admire his skills yeah. and talent and his brain. I'm not jealous of him mm -hmm. because I don't think he's happy. <laughs> oh, actually, that's a really good point. And, yeah. and like, I think he's incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of his work that, yeah. and his uh, mind. Yes. But yeah. I think that his happiness yeah. is not as 
good as my happiness maybe right now. I, I agree yeah. with you actually. Where yeah, I'm jealous of his body of work and his ability to be taken so seriously in many ways. Yeah. But you're totally right. Like I don't I wouldn't want to trade my mind for his because I do think he has he struggles. He's with, a genius. He's a and genius. Just like you yeah. said, yeah. Right. dumb people happy. Genius is sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is true. That's you ever get quote. down with uh, <laughs> Bo Burnham's uh, hour-long talk with Douglas Rushkoff? It's good shit. Is it about social media? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the movie sometimes. Eighth Grade. Eighth Grade oh. is a brilliant. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. One of the most, one of the best depictions. Yeah. Of reality mm -hmm. of that time of your life, yeah. I thought it was like, well, I was like, oh, I'm uncomfortable with how real this is. Yeah. And it all mm -hmm. stemmed from his realization that the way that he felt with an audience and the anxiety that he felt mm -hmm. is what every child feels when yeah. facing social right. media. That yeah. he was like, I'm not unique for, you know, doing this. And yeah. actually on the same vein, and I'll start, I'll kick off the next round of jealousy. Jealous circle, Mark <laughs> Duplass. I feel like I, people don't know who Mark Duplass is. He's a filmmaker in Los Angeles. He started by having absolutely no money, making like a short film. Mumblecore. Mumblecore is huge with him. Uh, the idea that you have like ideas for a script, but you're improvising as you're writing it and you're improvising in the scene and stuff like that. And he just has made a total living making indie movies. Um, and he makes like indie movies for Netflix and he made, makes indie TV shows for HBO and they're all low budget. And he has this whole mentality where he's just like, I want to be home by five for dinner with my kids and any project that takes me away from that. I generally say no. And like, I want to live an interesting life. I don't need to be in a Marvel movie. I don't need to be doing this. I want this sort of like insular small scope thing where like all the same people work on all our projects. And I was like, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Wow. Marky D and their book is good. Like two, uh, like brothers is what it's called. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, he has quite an eclectic career too. I mean, he's doing, Small, weird movies, but also comedy. He was on The yeah, League. He right. is then also making very serious stuff. He's making an anthology series. Togetherness He's is like one of my favorite shows. Do mm -hmm. you watch that? Mm -mm. I think you would fucking like it. I disagree. You, you, you would hate it. Yeah. I think you would hate it. I think I would hate it. Um, but no, it's great. It's about just like these couples and their relationships, but it's just really fucking good. And it's um fucking God. That actress who's in the camping not the camping movie. Here we go. Cut this out, Rainy. <laughs> Keep it in, Rainy. <laughs> the girl, uh, Lillian Keller. This Kellen, is good. You're she's a in the, in the Webby Award yellow winning yellow jackets, yellow jackets, yellow jackets, yellow jackets. <laughs> oh, she's in yeah, Yellow Jackets it's... and she's the woman with the black hair. Mm. She plays the best friend. Do you watch Yellow Jackets? I know the answer. Yeah, what's her name? I'm not going to tell you. Come on, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Give me what I came for. <laughs> her name yeah. has an L. Mindy. Killing. Min Mindy Kaling's on my list. Miranda. Really? Yeah. That's enough. I don't need to know the name. Exactly. Go ahead. Uh, okay. The next, I'm going to say two different people, but, it, but only because it's a similar reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm jealous of both uh, Andy Samberg yeah. and <laughs> just Rhett and Link together. I'm jealous of the idea that you could become a successful comedian with your childhood best friend. Yeah, that's amazing. I think they all have this beautiful story of they've been mm -hmm. friends since you know, middle school or elementary school, and they've been able to turn their friendship into this. So we haven't been friends as long. So you're saying <laughs> you would rather... No. You, you, you would rather... I wouldn't say I'd rather. You I'm would saying, rather... Does my friendship mean nothing to you? It means so much to me. <laughs> no, we were cast as friends. We're not real. Yeah. We've be maybe song. become friends, but we were cast as friends. But like we were, that... We were friends professionally before we were friends for real. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. And just the idea that like... I don't know. They've been able to like, they probably have inside jokes yeah. from when they were seven that they've buried in their content. Yeah. And that's cool. It's it just cool. like magical and special. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like, I just, I love that for them. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I don't think my childhood best friends and I could have done this career, you know? Yeah. Like together, I can't think of a, a childhood best friend of mine who's like, so creative and unique in that in the way that those people are mm -hmm. those like it's magical that they found each other oh yeah it's totally crazy they're soulmates if, as far as soulmate ism is real like their friendship is a soulmate thing like they're destined to be friends it's cool i do love that yeah they rule the little nailing guys mm -hmm. they're cool guys Pop star is so fucking good. If you haven't seen Pop star, oh my god, what a go great movie! It. Great Never, movie, and Walk Hard. Yeah, fuck. Walk really Hard's good so comedy good. music biopics are fucking good. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm jealous of this person, but um, I I have a lot of admiration. I was trying to think of somebody who, like, at the end of their life, like they they led a life that I would want to live, and it's my 
one of my, speaking of childhood best friends, my childhood best friend's grandpa, who I like, grew up calling Opa, and it was because, so I went Gangnam to- Gangnam style or? Uh, Opa. <laughs> Opa. <laughs> Opa. Um, so I, I grew up going to Vermont every summer with her family, and it was like the best week of my life. And then right in college, the Oma and Opa came to visit and we like had dinner. And Opa, I wanted to see if I was processing this correctly because you were talking so fast. Yeah. It's your friend's Opa. Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Friend's cool. grandpa. Friend's um, grandpa. Opa. Named Opa. Named Opa. Opa. <laughs> His name is actually uh, Delmer, which I think is a really cool name. Sick name. Yeah. Del Del Delmer. Delmer Opa. Elmer with a D. But, um, and he, so we were at dinner and then he like leaned into me. This like changed my life. He, so we were just talking and he leaned into me. I have no idea what he said, but he just sort of like smiled and made me feel like. <laughs> and then no, he died like, on me. <laughs> <laughs> he made me feel like just so like, like um, included. And I think oh. that um, going like after that moment, I was like making everybody feel seen is something that I've taken from him and like, or trying or like, you know, and just, and sort of like not judging anybody based on like, any number of interactions and just sort of like being warm. And I think I'm jealous of his ability to do that. Mm -hmm. Opa. That's Opa. beautiful. I think that that is, yeah, like making people feel included mm -hmm. is a huge mm -hmm. admiration yeah. thing for I have, I have a lot of people. Yeah. I'm going to give a quick, because uh, I already kind of just mentioned her, but Mindy Kaling, I, I genuinely think people do not realize how prolific she is yeah. as a writer and creator. Yeah. So I'll just give a quick shout and then... She's genius. She, she's like incredible and, she's and cool. has really, uh, you know, not retreated. She's uh, found comfort in a life behind camera and I think is so much more impressive as a writer and producer uh, than people realize. Someone that I love, I love Lord. Lord is... Which one? Lord... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord and Savior. Oh, yeah. JC. I'm, I'm sorry, which one? Oh, yeah. Thou shalt not have <laughs> any right. lords before. Damn right. I love Lord with an E. Uh, I mean, Melodrama is one of my favorite albums. Lordy, Lordy. Yeah. So, but I'm not jealous of her music career. What I love about her is that she retreats. And mm. she knows that as an artist, she's got to go away and fill her cup and come back. Yeah. And I'm serious. <laughs> she does, she's not on social media. No, I know. Everyone we brought up is people that go away. Yeah, go away. <laughs> yeah. And when here we are, we'll see you same time next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Solar Power, which like, look, you can have your notes about it. A lot of people do. I don't think it's as good as uh, melodrama, but it's very clear that she went off to New Zealand and hung out on the islands and did some drugs and found herself one with nature and then came back. And she's doing it for her. But what I what I love is that she changed the way that she communicates. So mm. she's not on Twitter, she's not on Instagram, but she has a newsletter, and it's a beautiful newsletter. And she'll send updates to her fans and write little letters and has photos and film, and it's just things that she finds interesting. And she's reframed the way that she communicates, uh, and I think it's super dope. Hell yeah, I like that a lot. I think the Lord is good. I remember I started listening to Lord when I first moved to Los Angeles. And um, it was the melodrama days. And I would just sort of drop. They Although, tell you this is <laughs> melodrama. Are we, ah. are we, what do we think as art critiques about her first album versus her latest album where her first album is all about like, uh, the, we'll never be royal. Like all these people who are celebrities and pop, like that's not oh. what it's about. And arguably the more recent one is about fun is dope and we should just be happy about life. Honestly, well, it's supposed to be totally a, different, but it does feel mm. like they're not the same. It, uh -huh. It's supposed to be a mm. critique, I know, but then it also wears... It, it, there, there were critiques about her album that it didn't really stick the landing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying it does or doesn't. That doesn't actually have anything to do with whether or not I'm impressed with her yeah. but or jealous of her. But yeah, it, I know like she like did songs on this album about, uh, you know being in the Hollywood Hills taking Danix and it was meant to be a critique of those people, mm -hmm. but it didn't actually, like, it's like a parody that didn't really feel like a parody, whatever. Right. Yeah. And you, but I mean, I loved her, but I remember what I originally loved about her was the whole vibe of like, mm -hmm. uh, look, I'm, I have this dark aesthetic and I'm not like most pop stars mm -hmm. and I'm singing about like how we won't be super right. big, rich. Okay. Famous and yeah. I agree. And I think melodrama is an, an evolvement of that yeah. sound. And like melodrama, I think is a perfect mm. album is so incredible. So again, and maybe this is, I'm there's a through line here of stuff that I admire and I'm jealous of how fucking cool that she said, all right, I'm going to go do something wildly different. I and agree. it's okay. If you like it, it's okay. If you don't, yeah. but what I'm jealous of, cause her album, 
came out and people were like, I'm not really sure about this. Yeah. You see her perform any of those songs. She's having the time of her mm. fucking life and yeah. she's not doing it for you. Mm-hmm. If you want to join, great. She'll be thrilled, but she's doing it from a deep place of love. And I think that's where art that's has cool. to come from. It but has yeah. to. Otherwise, yeah. like, what are you fucking doing? It's hollow. It's empty. It's meaningless. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point. Like, I think uh, it's cool that she's done it. And a lot of people I'm jealous of and I admire, it's not that I admire every piece of their work. It For is sure. that it is a vibe that they're giving off mm-hmm. that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, cause even though like they've changed as artists as they've gone, like, which is why I want to talk about Mel Gibson as we someone. Love I love the guy. <laughs> we love the guy. Passion of the Christ. Um, yeah, that is interesting. Cause like she's changed and she's just like, well, this is who I am. I'm not going to like, whereas I feel like there are celebrities that I'm just like, Ugh, when they try to, act like they haven't changed Mm -hmm. and they're still Mm -hmm. kind of playing the hits. And it's like, yeah, "Mm." Yeah. I saw this TikTok that was like art decorates space, music decorates time. And that made me, that was, I know that is really cool. Wow. 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 That's a good quote. That's a mind blower. That's fucking my mind. That's a wower right there. (laughs) All right, Miles, you want to hit us with the last, maybe we'll do a lightning round. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we just just give me 30 minutes? Just give me 30 minutes. Um, (laughs) Olivia Rodrigo was oh, who I was going to say <laughs> only because yeah, she's uh, awesome. it's very cool how quickly she got to have so much fun. Yeah. You know, from going to being a Disney star and then one year being like, like the, the what happened happened a year. Like she's on Met Gala coverage and she's like <laughs> yeah. doing huge shows and she gets to also uh, give a breakup album to an entire generation. That's like yeah. going to really be like something that decorates time of like, mm-hmm. yeah, for so many pop artists who start out singing songs about how much I want to be in love with someone mm. uh, because we're, or we're in love and everything's yeah. so happy. Her first album is like, I'm heartbroken and this sucks. And that's a really great, like a uh, cool thing that her whole, whole album was like that. Yeah. An appropriate yeah. choice for this episode. Cause her song is jealousy, jealousy, right? That's yeah. really true. Yeah. Um, Emma Chamberlain. Emma James. <gasps> and the reason is because I think she that goes she, away and she changed go, her content. She changed her content. <laughs> no, she's somebody who, I mean, I, I don't even know now. Like I follow her on Instagram, but I don't watch her videos or anything. Um, but I just liked that she was like a girl who lived in San Francisco. She didn't really play the YouTube algorithm game. Mm-hmm. She kind of was just like, I'm going to go get a coffee with my friend. And then like that was the video. I just thought that was a cool like she's just like a girl and she happens to be very universally charming. And that's like what, you know, kind of um, her vibe was. But I just liked the confidence. She was just like, I don't know. I'm just going to do my thing until people like me for that thing instead of. And obviously now she's like a megastar doing fashion shoots in Milan. But um, I just liked that origin story. I thought that was kind of cool. Lightning round. People that we're jealous of. I'm going to give a shout out to both Hank Green and Jack Conti. They're creative. They're CEOs. Hank has mm-hmm. like 8 billion projects. Jack is the CEO of Patreon. And then what I'm super jealous of him is that he also is a dope musician, so he can score his videos while he edits his cool. videos. So fucking mm-hmm. cool. Lightning round. Harrison Ford. Uh, he was a carpenter who became one of the greatest actors of his time because he was hot because he was hot and he plays and he only plays the coolest roles. He only gets to be in fantasy mm-hmm. things and he's a pilot who's crashed his plane three times and can't die. <gasps> Lightning round. <laughs> Stephen Colbert because he gets to interview celebrities every day Ooh. and he's <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and he's the only person who talks about religion in a way where I go. That's kind of lovely. Uh huh. Lightning round, uh, fucking Larry Wilmore. He's an awesome writer, and he has mentored uh, the next generation of writers. He was a mentor to Issa Rae and someone else I'm jealous of, Quinta B. Mm. Quinta mm-hmm. Beanson. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning round. <laughs> um, the Please Don't Destroy guys on SNL. Mm-hmm. They just were like, let's make sketches with our phones, and they're actually going to be really fucking cool and good to the point where SNL wants us to make them. Lightning round, Seth Rogen. I mm. am bad at pottery, and I wish I were as good as him. He's so cool. And also, I weed wish I were, brand. I were better at smoking weed. You know. Lightning round. Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. <laughs> Every pop star wishes that he would cover their song. Fuck yeah, and that's cool. He's so cool. Every pop star knows who he is, and they're hoping he will parody them. That's cool. That's really cool. Lightning round, Anthony Bourdain. Oh, I fucking think yeah. he's like one of the most important thoughtful creators of all time. And like, if you watch his show, I just read this book that was his, one of his directors wrote about him and about their stuff together. And it was so good. And just about him as a guy and how he was just kind of like tough fucking cook who was out 
making amazing stuff and uh, experiencing cool things. I was just like, man, that's like a cool guy. Lightning <laughs> round, Elon Musk. Just kidding. Fuck off and die, you billionaire bitch. Thank you so much. This has been a great episode, but it's time for advice from Miles. Here's a song. <laughs> da, 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 da. Here's a song for Miles and his advice call. It's advice it's- that'll go for Miles. Tune it to your radio station. It's advice that'll go for Miles. Everyone get ready. Miles Nation. Miles Nation. Go. From Webby Award winning podcaster. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, I love how you grabbed the mic there. I thought that was a really good effect. Well, people last week, it turns out they really love the effect from you. They think they just love you and they're letting you do dirty deeds on the podcast. (laughs) Thanks, baby. What's up, Miles Nation? Hope everybody's having a fantastic summer. The sun (laughs) is shining and we are thriving out here. It's like going to be October while the time this comes out. Let me just pull up my phone so I can remember what my advice was going to be. Oh, (laughs) ice cubes. (laughs) It's been ice adjacent for the last month, and I get that. Do you want to be cold? (laughs) It's ice month here at the (laughs) (laughs) tripod. We got to do Tucci month. We should do ice month, yeah. Have you ever wanted to be soiled? Mm. Stinky. (laughs) Way ahead of you. (laughs) Have you ever wanted to have the lush greenery of a garden faucet? You want, like, to... Use like mulch or something. Reese Witherspoon, more like Reese Wither Fern, because having a fern is a good way to keep your house good. Gwyneth Paltrow, more like Gwyneth Paltrow. Whoa, that's a lot of plants in your house, and you don't need soil to make the bish dirty. This is speaking to me. Talking about putting your plants in water. Oh. Letting them thrive. Letting them dive. Water down. your plants. No. Do you know no, that you plants grow them in need water, water no. to live? Here's what it is, Zach. So I can break it down for you like a little baby. I don't get <laughs> it. I don't understand things. What you're going to want to do is get a plant from the store. Okay. It has to be a plant that can survive in water. Google that shit, okay? And then you're going to use a faucet and or spoon and or hose to spray away, spray the paint away, spray the paint away, spray the soil away, and then it's going to be all just roots. And then you put the roots in a fucking cup of water. Oh, I have this. And then it's just like, wow, the plant's surviving without any soil. Yeah. Interesting. But it's not for all plants. And some plants, it's like, it'll survive, but it's not going to grow. I don't give a shit about it growing. I just want it to look pretty and survive mm-hmm. and not die. Yeah. You can do and, that with a lot of your edible vegetables. Yeah. Oh. And I got like, my shit had root rot because like it came from the store and the roots mm-hmm. were all clumped up. And mm-hmm. so there was like moisture getting trapped and the roots were rotting mm-hmm. and it was dying. And so I did this with my Monstera. <laughs> And it so far is thriving. Yeah, we um we prop are propagating our monstera. Oh, that's and fun. you can see the roots, and it looks cool. Yeah, it's it does super look dope. cool. It looks, it looks cooler cool. than a soil. Yeah, you just got to make sure to change the water out every now and then. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it'll get funky. 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 It's time to, to get, get funky. 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 Clap, 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 clap your hands, guys. I was at a wedding. This is gotta it be. We gotta go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. We're more about Zach's wedding experience <laughs> next time. <laughs> Keith, it is for the official tripod theme song. Zibizapa, zibididu, zibizapa, wa, 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 zibizapa, zibididu. What happened at that wedding? We won't know. <laughs> it's a tripod. <laughs> <laughs>